good evening. Oh, I see Sandy. For those of y'all that are watching on YouTube, via Facebook, or actually in the house today, we so good to see y'all. Everybody looking so good in the new week. So I hope that y'all enjoy some uh, good days, some of those bad days that they say, but thank God we are here. We are here to, to hear the word tonight. Without further ado, we want to uh, do our 91st song. 91st song says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh through darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come by thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because I will make the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up to their end, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall not trample on the sea. Because he has great love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. So it is my honor to, to, to make this to you this evening with the lovely Deaconess from the Deaconess. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Praise God. You know, today is one of the wonderful days. It's been a really an awesome day. Um, me and the sister, we had an opportunity to pray this morning, and we were just excited because we were still bubbling over the message that came across the pulpit on um, on Sunday. Has anybody else been like that? I mean, I've been I've been just eating off it all week. I mean, I don't have nothing, you know, necessarily. That's oh, y'all can see. We have to do the um, the little quiz first. Amen. <laughs> But um, I've just been um, I've just been excited about the word, about the resurrection, about you know us rising up again, and that old man being put down. I was I've just been excited. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just I'm just overjoyed. I I, you, I just smile. I ain't got nothing. You, you ask me, I, I don't know. I'm just happy. <laughs> Amen. So of course, as always. We have our little quiz before we get into the word for tonight. So, are y'all ready? Now, as my husband said, but for those of you that may not know, last week was my beloved, but we're going to save that for home as Pastor um, Pat said. But uh, giving honor first to God, who's the head of my life, and also thanking uh, Pastor John and Pastor Pat for allowing me to come and do the Bible study tonight. And I thank God that he has the nerves and he has everything. <laughs> and we're just going to move on and let him do whatever he desires to do. Because my, my, my question was, Lord, what do you want me to, to teach your people? So we're going to allow him to do just that. Amen. So our first question, y'all ready? I see y'all got your notes open. What was the title of Pastor Salisbury message Sunday, and what was the main scripture? So that's two parts. Two parts. Two. Because it's easy to get the title, because it's on the um, 
message. But what was the scripture that he came from? Given time for those of you that's at home. Uh-oh, they go to music now. We're looking. Everybody looking. We ready? Amen. Anybody got it? What was the name? In the scripture? You know when it got to that scripture, they got so the Oh, oh, no, no. Okay. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. All right. N- number 2. Now, we're going to give you the scripture in Romans 6, 1 through 10. Who was the apostle Paul speaking? Let me say that again because I don't want to hear my husband when I go home. Who was the apostle Paul speaking to in the scripture? Who was he speaking to in Romans 6, 1 through 10? Who was he speaking to? <laughs> All right. Who was he speaking to? The Romans. <laughs> I can hear everybody like, oh. <laughs> but it was the Roman church. All right. Fill in the blank. There can be no new life without a blank. There can be no new life. Now, I think I'll pass the, um, the bill and say, if you don't know this, you're no longer a member of the church. I'm going to put you out. <laughs> the, there can be no new life without a... Okay. Do you have an answer? Anybody online? Nobody online? We're going to cut the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, what have we been talking about? If there's no, there can be no new life with a resurrection. With a resurrection, I'm sorry, it's with. No, with. With a resurrection. See, I told you that that's my pastor. I'm sorry, that was me. It's with, not without a resurrection. See, here my pastor understood exactly what I was saying. <laughs> exactly. Amen. All right. True or false? According to the message, hell is prepared for the devil and his angels who fell with him. True or false? Do we need time for that one? No. What is it? True, true. It was not prepared for us. So if you heard people tell you that it did it, it was not. It was prepared for them. Amen? All right. Mm. All right. One. Are you? All right. Um, according to the message, when we come on God's side and you're walking in the newness of life, He changes. Four things. <laughs> Did I get it all? Four things. Pastor told us. I remember writing them down. No? They can't see what you're talking about. Amen, Cone. That's the Amen Cone over there. You got them? Nobody? Two of them? One of them? You can't answer. <laughs> Yours was harder than mine, baby. <laughs> we got them? What you got? That is character, attitude, identity, language, thoughts, desires. He actually gave more than four. It was a whole slew of them. Character, attitude, language, thoughts, desires. Yes, yeah, he, he gave them. Pastor gave a whole list of them. Yes, he did. 
Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Last one. What scripture did Pastor uh, John say that every child of God should know? Every child of God should know. And I think we actually hit it again today. The same scripture. Is it scripture? We know it. All right, we get some, somebody uh, answered online. Oh, you. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's it. Of course, it has to know. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Oh, you're going to hear that again tonight, too. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right, that's it. So how did y'all do? You guys do well? We passed a hundred? Yes. Amen, amen, amen. All right, all right. So we have, like I said earlier, we have just been blessed by the message. I know that I have, and I can only imagine how much that you have been blessed. Pastor John started on Easter Sunday. He was talking about us uh, living in a resurrection, living in resurrection power, living in resurrection power. He reminded us that the resurrection is the heart of every Christian message. We've heard it as being called the gospel, okay? He said that it was a fixed principle. That means it cannot be changed, negated, or debated. Pastor John gave us the definition for resurrection, which means standing or rising up again or raising up again. Pastor John reminded us that resurrection is not an event, but it is a person, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus came, became sin, which is the very thing that God hated. He became that for us. His death, his burial, and resurrection made him the way for us to live. Literally, the way for us to live. Without his death, we would not have salvation. So, why? Because the resurrection, Jesus is the only way for us to walk in the newness of life. The resurrection life in Christ is a transformation. And it's not just a transformation, but that transformation is a process for every believer. So when we get saved, we don't just come in and we be like, oh, okay, I'm good now. I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to heaven and I'm good. You know, no, it's a process. All right? So this means that there is a metamorphosis that must take place. We become new through the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. So what I would love to do tonight is pick up on three points. One of them is vessels bearing the master seal. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, let's stop because I did not pray, and we need to make sure that the Lord is here and that he is speaking. Amen? Amen. I can stop. Amen. Most kind and gracious Father, Lord God, Jesus, we just thank you. And we praise you right now for you being our King and Lord. Father God, we ask for you to speak through us tonight, Father God, so that your people will receive the message that you have yet written on my lips, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Decrease me so that you may increase in all things tonight, Father God. Let the word that has already been implanted be watered tonight, Father God, so that you may give the increase, Father. Let us not only hear it, but let us make application unto it into our lives. In your name we pray this morning, amen, or this evening, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing like prayer. Don't you love it? Ain't nothing like it. Amen. So tonight what uh, I would like to do is I'm just going to teach what I've already been taught. It says, Pastor uh, John uh, on... um, Sunday talked about the newness of life, and within the newness of life, 
he was talking about the decisions that we have to make and how we have to make the decision to live according to what the Word says, because that's the only way that we can enjoy the newness of life. So I have three areas that I want to discuss today. The first one is vessels bearing the master's seal. Vessels bearing the master's seal. The second one is noble and ignoble vessels. Noble and ignoble vessels. And the third is meat for the master's use. Meat for the master's use. And as my husband has stated, everything that God has given unto us, we were blessed to receive from the hour of a pastor's man of God, which we were up under, uh, Bishop Holcomb. So all we're doing is taking what we have been taught and giving it back in the way that God has allowed us to give it back uh, to you. Amen? So these were taken out of uh, Bishop Holcomb's teaching. Amen? So point number one, vessels bearing the master's seal. Okay? Our scripture for the day, and we're going to go back and forth through it, is going to be 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 through 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. Okay? And we're going to read verse 19 now. And it says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So if we take a look at this verse, this verse talks about a seal. And this seal is what Bishop Holcomb called the master seal. Now, if you haven't realized, the master is our Lord God. Amen? He is our King of kings and our Lord of lords. He is the one that we look to. He is the one that we call upon. He is the one that we pray. But he has a seal that he places on us upon at the time of salvation. All right? And so that seal, that seal also lets people know or let them see the intimacy that we have to him. And you remember Pastor John taught us about the word intimacy. He said, it's into me you see, not into us, but we should be able to see into the Lord because of the closeness, the relationship that we have with him. And so when we have his seal, People should be able to look at us and see something different because of that newness of life that we have when we accept that salvation. Amen? So, God has identified us as His children. Amen? And as children, children always grow and mature. So, when we initially become saved, we are considered children because it's new. We've got to be taught. When I look at uh, the little young, um, I forget what the baby's name is, Taro, when I look at him and I see him trying to walk because he's just now learning to walk and, and he's just moving and moving. And I consider and I look at, you know, some of the older children who's running and running. And I'm like, you know, in just a few weeks or a few months, he's going to be running. He ain't going to even know that he was, he, he was barely walking, but he's going to be running. And that's how it is when we become saved. That's how it is when that master seal is put on us. Initially, you may not be able to see it. It may seem like it's a little small pet, but the more that we begin to love on God and get to know Him, the more that we begin to eat His Word, that seal gets bigger and people can see it, not just when they walk up, hallelujah, upon us, but they can be way back there. They be like, what, 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 who is, what is that? Who is that? Because it's His presence that they are calling for. Amen? 
All right, amen. So this seal, this seal attests to, to the fact that we are that we rest securely in the foundation of Christ, because Jesus is the unshakable, immovable rock upon which we are built. He is the chief cornerstone. Now, the scripture that we want to look at that talks about him being the chief cornerstone is First Peter chapter two, verse six through seven. I'm going to say it again. First Peter chapter two, verse six through seven, and this is what it says. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. We need to understand that a cornerstone is an original stone. Hallelujah. And Jesus is the original stone. So if you ever had a copier, and now we have, have the ability to have copiers even in our home now, but every time you have a copy, you make a copy of something, it doesn't always look just like this original because it is not taken from the original. The number one, the one that you originally took it out, it's going to be fake in some way. You're going to be able to tell the difference between it. But see, Jesus says that he is the chief cornerstone that each one of us is being cut from. So when you look at me, you can be able to see Olivia. You can be able to see the Jesus that is in Olivia. So even though my eyes may be a different color, my ears may be this, whatever, when you look at me, you're supposed to see the spirit of him that is in me. You know, this is what I love about the ministry because I remember Pastor Pat saying that you are my children because you look like me. Hallelujah. I can tell that you belong to me because you sound like me. Hallelujah. And then even on Sunday, Pastor uh, gave us three points that he was that he spoke about. He says that we walk, we have to walk with God. We have to walk. We'll bring that walk with God, and then we have to walk away from them that do not walk with God. So if someone don't look like us, we can be walking with them. And that's not trying to be funny or fake. That is just true. Because if you are about God's business, you shouldn't want to be about nobody else that's not. Because your conversation, I don't care, I, me and my best friend. We can talk about anything else, but it's going to lead back to Christ. We can talk about those fears that we found in ourselves, but then it's going to be, you know, what I love God, because He made it for me. He always wants to do it for me. I don't care what it is, but it always, always comes back to God. It's because He's just, He just is. He is the bomb, He is the cake, He's the cookies, He's the chips, He's the. The ice cream, I mean, it ain't anything that you know. He is it and he becomes it. Now, if you like some other kind of desires, he's that too. All right? Amen, amen. So we have to make sure that we are bearing the seal that God, our master, is. Amen? And as we grow and mature, that seal will continue to move and grow with us as well. So that takes us to, to that scripture that we talked about earlier. Second Corinthians six seventeen or maybe five seventeen. Where it says, Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. My God. God is saying, If you ain't clean, if you ain't heeding my word. If you ain't looking like me, I ain't going to receive you. Hello. Just in case you thought that you could get by, just in case you thought you could do it on the side, God sees it all. And he said, I'm watching you because you belong to me. You belong to me. But you know what? You 
even if you have strayed away, God loves us so much that He finds a way so to ensure that we have the opportunity to come back. So you got to keep listening so you can hear what that way is. Amen. All right. So we're going to move on to point two. Point two is talking about noble and ignoble house vessels. And we really have already touched on that because if you haven't been listening, we there's been a distinction between believers and unbelievers. Amen? And the world talks about that. So remember I told you that we were going to look in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. Now, we went over verse 19 just a moment ago when we were talking about we have to carry the master seal. But now let's go to verse 20. Verse 20 says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Do you see that distinction? I like gold and I like silver, but there is a big difference between gold and silver. If you don't uh, know that, try to go out and purchase it and see what, how much more it costs to get gold than it is to get silver. Hello? Amen? So there is a distinction. And then when um, the world talks about there's also um, wood and then there's also clay. Wood and then clay. How many of you know that clay can be broken easily? You can just slip it and sometimes it'll break. Amen? But you can't be coming over here on this wood stairs. You fall if you want to. Because <laughs> it's going to hurt. There is a distinction. And I love that word distinction because there is a distinction between believers and unbelievers. Unbelievers. We better know that. Hallelujah. We better know that. So in this, um, we want to make sure that we are represented as those who belong to Christ. Now, the scripture, and I love God because he will never leave us without making sure that we know everything. He said, okay, now I told you that there's a difference between gold and silver, and I told you there's a difference between word, the, I mean the wood and the clay, but just in case you didn't get it, what I'm saying to you is there are some that were honor and there are some that were dishonor. So now he's talking about in the house. In the house. And you know Pastor John talked about it. He said sometimes, and even uh, Pastor John, I mean Pastor Pat talked about it, sometimes there are some that have been trained to look like a Christian. But they are really not a Christian. So that's that distinction between those who are in the house who are honoring the house and then those that are in the house who are dishonoring the house. And so, um, Bishop Holcomb said that this is indicative, indicative of God's house. There are two kinds of people, noble and ignoble. And this is how he broke it down, because I, I don't want to miss that, but I want to make sure you hear this. He said there are people willing to do right. He said, and then there are people who are there for bad reasons. Now, when I read that, I said, well, he said there was people willing to do right. So I figured the other person would be the people that's willing to do wrong. He said, uh -uh. I don't need you to just know that some do right, some do wrong. He said there are people who are there for bad reasons. He wanted to make sure that you understood the distinction between those who are doing and willing to do right and those who are not doing bad but are there to cause confusion. Those who are there to do bad things that you know is against God that is manipulative. Things that you know that the world has spoken of and they say it's okay. Now, we need to make sure that we understand that God don't just see us at church, but God sees us at our own homes. So, we know that our pastors are very careful about what they hear comes in their hearing, what they see, and even what they speak. Now, this is what I have picked up from the ministry since I've been in here, is to be careful of this little 
little this little member here, this little tongue that I got that I have to make sure that I'm careful of. And I've been praying, God, teach me how to say why you're mad. And those don't know what that means. Keep your mouth shut because this can get you in trouble. Not only can it get you in trouble and have you say things that you shouldn't say, it can have you speak things over your life that you don't even know that you didn't speak, that you didn't put it out there. Now you didn't gave the enemy free reign to come in your life and cause havoc. Amen? Because we need to make sure that we are not speaking our bad things, that we are not speaking and babbling things that is not of God. And the only way that we can do that, guys, and Pastor John has told us, is we got to study his word. Pastor Shabon said that we have to meditate. When she said meditate, she didn't say that sit down and be like, oh, well, you know the scriptures. No, she said that meditate had to do with you reflecting, with you saying it over and over and over again. And so that took me to a place where I had to go in the Word and look at it. And then I began to learn how they learned the scriptures back in the day in the Word. When they had to learn, I think it was called the Torah, they actually would speak it. They would pronounce it and, and say it over and over so that they could get it. But the more they heard it, the more it stayed and became a part of them. And I think that some of us forget that that is necessary for today. Because I've even heard it said that you really don't remember a thing unless you hear it at least, or you say it at least three times, three times. How many of us have taken a scripture and said it three times? How many of us, like the little children in school, where they say, I want you to take your word and put it in a sentence? How many of us have taken the word and applied it to our lives each and every day? There is a distinction between a believer and an unbeliever. There is a distinction between a noble vessel and an ignoble vessel. And that distinction is they depend on the Lord in all things, in the way they speak, the way they talk, the way they walk. Amen? So we have to be very, very careful. Now, we do not have to be afraid or dismayed be, because we must consider ourselves. We must continually strive to become vessels of honor. If you remember I told you earlier, what if we miss the mark? You know what? God loves us so much that he's still right there. I got a scripture for you. So this is the one that when you miss that mark or something is going wrong, remember this one. Second Peter 3, verse 9. Second Peter 3, verse 9. This is what it says. The Lord is not slack. Come on now. Concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Come on now. You know what that means? He might not come when you think he's supposed to come, but he comes when it's necessary according to his will for him to come. So I, I saw a, a saying that says, if if it's, still, if it's still going on, then it's not at the end yet. So whatever is going on in your life, if you're still going through it, then that's because God has not called it to an end. Because God has to speak things into existence. He only has to do is speak it and make it happen. So if we're still going through, if we're still doing whatever it is that God has said for us to do or to bear, then that's because he has said that it's over yet. And he knows better than us. Oh, God, that's a word up for me. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you have a face on it, you be like, ooh. Okay, God, amen, praise him. <laughs> that was one that touched the core. Amen, hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So if we don't love him, we take our frail, frail, our frail, play lives and predicate us into honorable implements of himself. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that is so, that is so wonderful. He will make us into small little mini-me's of himself. If we are willing. If we are willing. 
He alone can breathe into us the inspiration needed to cause us to separate ourselves from all contaminants and in doing so make us profitable for Him. God always has an exit plan for us. Isn't that wonderful? Oh my God, I just love it. I just love Jesus. Oh, you know? Okay, okay, I'm going to calm down. I'll be like my pastor. Okay, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down. All right, amen? So now we're going to go to our final point, which is meat for the master's use. Meat for the master's use. M-E-E-T. Not M-E-A-T. Because I was struggling like that for a long time. <laughs> but it's M-E-E-T. <laughs> Amen. All right. As servants of God, we must turn from iniquity and turn toward God in order to be meat for the master's use. So, the word meat here, let's read the scripture first. Remember, we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We read verse 19. That's where we have the master seal. Verse 20. That's where we need to make sure that we are honorable and not ignoble vessels. And now in verse 21, it says, If a man therefore purrs, come on, himself from these, that's the things where he was saying the difference between a noble and an ignoble vessel, he should be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meek for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So the word meat in this verse means this, usable, suitable, and profitable. Usable, suitable, and profitable. This also means the person or individual must desire to be pliable and usable. You have to have a desire. I remember in one of of, of Bishop Holcomb's book where it says, teach me how to uh, pray. And I think I heard Pastor John also uh, reflect on it. In that book, um, it talks about when the apostles um, uh, asked Jesus when to pray. And the the point that Bishop Holcomb was making is that they had to ask. They couldn't he just assume that, that, that he was going to teach them. They literally had to ask. So if we want to be meek for the master's use, we got to have a desire to want to be used. Because sometimes some people don't want to be used. They love sitting in their chair. I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just calling from experience. They content with being in the chair, literally in the chair. Don't ask me to have no trash. Don't ask me no, to watch no window. Don't don't ask me to stand at the door because the earth is late. Uh-uh. Earth. Come on. Earth. The earth. I don't even know how it's pronounced correctly, but that's what I say. Okay. Uh, earth. Oh, earth. Oh, well, praise him. I got it right. Amen. So we have to have a desire to be pliable. Every true Christian pursuing Christ should have a propensity, a hunger, a thirst, and what our pastor has told us, a passion to please God and to be used by Him. But we have to be willing to separate ourselves from the foulness. And so that's a decision that we have to make. So if we want to live in that life with under the resurrection power, if we want to have that newness of life, if we want to have the master seal, it requires that we make a conscious decision that this is what we want. And because this is what we want, I'm going to do what it takes in order to attain what it is that I want. And so that means it's no longer I. It's no longer me. But it is Him. What do He 
says? What do our Father says? What does His Word say about this? So that means that in order for you to know that, we've got to draw closer to Him. We've got to seek out His will. And it's good that we have a, a good friends that we can talk to, but your best go-to should be the Lord. And if you have a friend, that friend should steer you to the Lord as well. Amen? Amen. So that's all that God has given unto me tonight. Uh, I'm grateful and thankful for the place that God has placed us in. And we, I have made a decision that I do want to walk in the resurrection life. I've made that decision. I've made the decision that I am walking, not going to, but I am walking in the newness of life. And I have made the decision, and I have the desire to be a noble belter, one of honor. And I pray that you have too. And for those that have that desire and they don't know how, link up with someone. Don't you know the word talks about us taking up the yoke, yoking ourselves together, one strong and then one that may be weak so that we can carry the load one for another. That's what we're here for. And I love our ministry because that's what we show. That's what we do. That's what we do with each other. Amen? Amen. Let someone else have something. Amen. And that's all that I've got. Did I keep your family? All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to do our, uh, say our closing. You ready? The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his confidence upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Have a wonderful evening. All right. Most kind and gracious Father, <laughs> we thank you, Father God, for your word, hallelujah, that continues to burn in us, Father God. We thank you, God, that we are all on one accord, Father God, that we have a like mind, that we have the oneness of that spirit, Father God, and that we have the intention and the goal to draw closer to you, Father God. And your promise is that you would draw closer to us so that we can be, be that noble vessel that you speak of. So, Heavenly Father, continue to watch over us, protect us as we go to our homes, hallelujah. Protect Pastor as he's away at work, Father, and bring him back home safely and help him to get good rest, Father God, so that he's prepared to continue to do the task you have set for him, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you for Pastor Pat. Continue to watch over her. Continue to download things within her so that she may steer us in the right way according to your word. In Jesus' name, we pray 